And our top story tonight, police investigators are still piecing that rush hour shootout in La Grand Princess yesterday afternoon together. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. Thanks a lot, Jerome. We're here in La Grand Princess where all hell broke loose at around 4.45 yesterday afternoon. First of all, let me set the table. The entire upper echelons of the St. Croix Police Department, as far as public information is concerned, is on vacation. Novell Francis, police commissioner, out on leave, vacation. Melody Rames, the primary information officer, out on vacation. Police Chief Howe, out on vacation, and he has no deputy chief. All information has been thrown in the lap of Ms. Kishma Harrigan, Melody's assistant in St. Thomas. Here's what's going on. At around 4.30 yesterday, as I said, uh, we had all hell breaking loose here in La Grand Princess. The entire territory is talking about it now. Apparently, we have three armed suspects, possible three armed suspects, uh, down that street, past the education area where the camera is panning to a house towards the bottom. They attempted to rob the individual in that home, and the occupant apparently came out and started firing shots at the robbers. As far as what we know, at least one was hit twice in his back. He is recovering now at Juan Louis Hospital. Meanwhile, the confrontation came up here. And this is where a lot of the chaos happened, as you see these vehicles at this very busy intersection in the area of La Grande Princess. Right around rush hour, shots uh, still being fired apparently. What we have then is two male individuals crossing this area with VIPD in hot pursuit. Information coming from witnesses on the scene going back towards this alley there. They fled into the bushes. Uh, that they would try to elude police, even with canine and special operations, SWAT, various law agencies, federal and local, looking for these guys all over. Remember, darkness was going to come in shortly after that. So hence the chaos. Now, like I said, personal belongings were taken uh, from that um, house that was robbed. And again, those two suspects fled in this area. We do know that. Now, talking to some witnesses right uh, across the street from this post office truck there, we have 20-year-old Mark Thomas in a backyard there, possibly in that greenhouse over there uh, area. He was uh, accosted by police officers, taken into custody. We're trying to secure his picture uh, for tonight. Uh, that 20-year-old Mark Thomas, uh, he remains the only suspect in custody tonight. He is being charged with first-degree burglary. His bail is set at $75,000. He was remanded to Golden Grove Adult uh, Facility. Again, want to remind you that that victim, he was injured above his, his upper body, and he remains at Juan Louis Hospital. And now it just gets a little thicker, doesn't it? We have in the area of Richmond, uh, near the uh, WAPA area and the fire station, we have a vehicle that reportedly uh, could have crashed into a tree. We have two males possibly fleeing the scene after that crash. That vehicle was also stolen, uh, by the way. Possibly now those two suspects got on a seaborne flight to St. Thomas. Yes, what a puzzling and intriguing situation this one is. Um, meanwhile, uh, St. Croix police called St. Thomas police. They uh, questioned two suspects, two individuals. They are not suspects in St. Thomas, and they were subsequently released. If you know anything about all this adventure and drama that happened during rush hour yesterday, you need to call 911, or you can always call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. Have a good weekend. Watch yourselves out there. Look out for each other and keep your head up. And La Grande Princess, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And another news tonight, we have another exclusive with the updates on the infamous LEAC situation. News Channel 8's Wes Small has the report. Thank you very much, Jerome, and thank God it's Friday. It's been another hectic weekend. First of all, I'm here with Senator Alicia Chucky Hanson. We're going to talk about two topics, starting with the infamous LEOC and then um, into another bill that she has passed about tax clearance letters involving businesses. And before we start out, I want to offer my condolences 
uh, through Channel 8 to Senator Hansen's family on the recent loss of not only her brother, but then she had another tragedy shortly before that with a member of her staff that literally uh, took you out of action for a time, Senator. Let's start with the LIAC. Senator, we are literally dying, being strangled by this LIAC. Please give us an update, and I know it's very complicated, on what's going on. Well, uh, I think the same position that uh, you took, and I have been observing the same observation that everyone has observed. The LIAC, in my opinion, is illegal. It is a cause of four times more than what you actually consume. I believe based on our extension agreement, and specifically the third extension agreement, it is not being analyzed and bill, in my opinion, as it should be. And WAPA on July the 5th, just about three and a half weeks ago, during the Finance Committee meeting on budget, they indicated to Mr. Uh, Hugo Hodge that they cannot see the books for WAPA. He made it very clear. They have not been able to examine it. WAPA, uh, Miho Bensa refused to allow them to examine it, and I continue to pursue. Then why have you not talked to the governor about it? He said he did talk to the governor. Nothing has happened. The following day, July 6th, I had the inspector general. I requested of the inspector general, based on what Mr. Hugo Hodge indicated, that he cannot verify the facts by looking at the books and analyzing those books at Hovensa. And the Inspector General promised to look into the matter. However, in the meantime, we continue to get Public Service Commission increasing without detailed investigation of what is taking place. To make it simple, I've decided not getting the support of the legislation that I think that I should get with their assertion that nothing could ever happen about this issue. Well, then I've taken it, we researched, we investigated, we have put a package very tight to present it before the Superior Court. Yesterday, I received an order that we are to go and be presented at the Superior Court on Monday, uh, July 8. Good. All right. So this is going to take place this coming Monday for everyone who wishes to attend. Congratulations. I suppose they're in order because of the bill that you sponsored involving um, tax letters with the IRB and business um, licenses. Tell us about that one. I believe very strongly since that law came into place, it has done nothing more than to close down our businesses. In this atmosphere, especially with the LIAC, businesses are closing left and right. They just cannot sustain. On top of that, they have issues with the IRS because their excess monies, you can't really plan a budget today. And therefore, they run into some issues, paying the gross receipt tax or whatever. I believe that the IRS is in business to pursue people in paying their taxes, and taxes should be paid. And DLCA, their business should be to encourage people to continue to be in business, open business, provide their license, and nothing more. And so let DLC deal with licensing and IRB deal with the issues of taxation. And I'm very happy to report you're correct. During my government operation, Energy and Veterans Affairs yesterday, it did pass Bill 290119, and I thank my colleagues for their support, and now it goes to rules. The Chamber of Commerce came by and endorsed it. We had other members of our community that, in fact, showed very clearly that they have been a hardship even trying to open a business in the Virgin Islands, and that is a fact. Thank you, Senator Hansen. I believe next time we talk to the senator, we'll be talking about the progress of the Frederickstead Clinic. She is busier than a gopher in loose dirt. With that, Senator, excuse the analogy. You're not like that, of course. You know, I get a little crazy at the end of the week. Have a great weekend to oh, best you. Have to a wonderful family. weekend to Thank everybody. You. An update with LIOC and the bill that was passed yesterday in Senate. I'm Wes Small. Have a great weekend from everyone at News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes, and we want to thank Senator Chucky Hansen for her interview tonight. And there was a teenage debate on alcohol abuse last night on St. Croix. Let's take a look at the highlights. You're four times more likely to crash and be killed or injured than you are to be arrested for exceeding the DUI limit. So if you're concerned about being caught drunk driving, think again. There's a better chance you'll be caught dead instead. Charles Wright Gunsalves. 
age 18. Date, February 3rd, 2009. How? Shut. Obviously, alcohol drinking teenage driver is not where we need to be emphasizing. We have other issues, more important. All the students will be receiving a certificate of award, and it reads, in recognition of your devoted contribution and participation in the alcohol awareness debate, dated August 4th, 2011. Naromi Bellas. <laughs> Nelson Bellas. Well, those are some great speeches and some great words from our students here on St. Croix. When we come back from this break, we'll take a look at BOGO's entertainment report plus more. Stay with us.